tonight. Happening right now, opening the vaccine floodgates. In just a few hours, almost everyone in the Carolinas can get a COVID shot. But is the medicine getting into underserved neighborhoods? We verify and get answers. Don't wait it to happen to you before you form an organization. I know to do something about. Seeking solutions to make safer neighborhoods. The plan now in place to help curb violence in the Queen City. People are skipping their second COVID vaccine. Our Verify team finds out if you really need the second shot and what it means if you miss it. In sports, baseball is back in Uptown. The test run for the Charlotte Knights to get them back at Truist Field. It's Tuesday, April 6th. WCNC Charlotte News at 11 starts right now. Hello, everyone, and thank you for staying up with us. I'm Fred Shropshire. And I'm Sarah French. Tomorrow, anyone 16 and older will be eligible to get a COVID vaccine in North Carolina. Since December, more than 5.2 million vaccinations have been administered statewide. More than a quarter of adults are now fully vaccinated. But are these vaccines getting into some of our underserved communities? It's something that our local leaders have promised, but is it actually happening? Our Hunter Signs has been researching and talking to the experts. He joins us now to verify the facts. Sarah, we know we struggled at the beginning of this vaccine rollout to get them out in an equitable way. So a few months into it now, we wanted to check in and see where we stand right now. Our main question, is there still an equity problem when it comes to vaccine distribution here in Mecklenburg County? Let's verify. Our sources for tonight are Dr. Meg Sullivan with Mecklenburg County Public Health Department, the health department itself, and the U.S. Census Bureau. According to the projection data from the Census 55% of Mecklenburg County's population is white. 34% of people in the county are black and 14% are Hispanic. But according to new data given to Mecklenburg County leaders tonight, so far roughly 25% of first doses given by the county health department have been given to African Americans, even though they account for 34% of the population. 58% of first doses have been given to whites and only 8% of shots have gone to Hispanics. It's better, though, than where we were at two months ago. Health officials say vaccine hesitancy, transportation, and getting the vaccine to our underserved communities are still things they're working on, but it still proves vaccines have not been given out in an equitable way. Dr. Meg Sullivan says her team is making progress to reduce those inequities. You know, I think that that's something that's been a focus of ours from the very beginning. Our vaccine equity plan has been at the core of everything that we've done in terms of vaccine response. I think we're, you know, have definitely made progress since we started, but still have work to do. Dr. Sullivan says that the county is continuing to partner with local churches to hold vaccine clinics as well as local pharmacists so that people can trust who they're getting the vaccine from even in their own neighborhood instead of coming to a big location like Bojangles Coliseum to get their shot. Tonight at a county board meeting, Dr. Raynard Washington, also with the county health department, was asked by Commissioner Pat Cotham on a scale from 1 to 10, with 10 being total equity in the vaccine distribution, where does Mecklenburg County stand? Washington gave us a five to six. So we can verify, yes, there still is an equity problem in the vaccine rollout. Live with your Verify in East Charlotte, I'm Hunter Signs. Hunter, thank you. And as North Carolina prepares to open up group five in the vaccine process, health leaders urging people to be patient. As we know, days when eligibility expands leads to busy phone lines and crashed websites with millions of people trying to book a shot. And while we understand it's frustrating, state health leaders say don't give up. They say getting these shots is the only way to ensure us getting back to normal life. We know everyone's not going to get a vaccine tomorrow, but we encourage folks to start really making sure that they're putting that on their to-do list, making sure they're getting their appointment and getting their, their vaccine, because the quicker we vaccinate everyone, the safer we all are as a state. A part of the issue here when the floodgates open is the supply doses versus the demand, but health leaders say dose supply is finally growing, and soon anyone who wants a shot will be able to get one.
If you have any questions about how to book an appointment in your area, WCNC Charlotte is here to help you. Log on to our website, WCNC.com, and once you get there, scroll down to the featured section and click on the tab that says how to book an appointment in both North Carolina and South Carolina. New at 11, a conversation about violence with hopes of creating an action plan for change. Tonight, neighbors join law enforcement to talk about the good, like a seven-year-old girl's miraculous recovery from a shooting, but also talk about the bad, like the gun violence that continues to plague our neighborhoods. But now, with the help of a new city partnership, there's hope that some of that violence could change. WCNC Charlotte's Brianna Harper is seeking solutions tonight. A community meeting sparked by the story of this little girl with a big impact. Seven-year-old Ziana, an innocent victim of gun violence after police say she was shot in the chest last week, but thankfully she fought to survive. Not only she died down the brain, she died down the strong. That's it. Yeah. It's this kind of positivity the community hopes might spark some change with the help of everyone. Amen. This community needs healing. Amen. This community need help. Amen. This community needs each and every one of you in this room. The Mecklenburg County Sheriff Gary McFadden says it'll take a lot more than just talk, but also action. Don't wait it to happen to you before you form an organization to do something about it. Now the city of Charlotte is taking action of its own, announcing a new partnership with youth advocate programs. The organization has used similar violence prevention methods in Baltimore, Washington, D.C., and Chicago. And now they're bringing their talents to the Queen City. The most important thing is hiring all six people, all the violence interrupted, uh, interruption workers and outreach workers, they're all going to be hired locally from within Charlotte. The goal is to work in target neighborhoods, partner with local businesses, and reduce retaliatory violence. Hopeful that initial success can be seen within 60 to 90 days. There is an alternative uh, to violence, trying to change the norms, change the values around violence. And after tonight's meeting, the plan is to come back next month and bring ideas about ways to keep kids busy and keep them out of trouble as summer approaches. Reporting in West Charlotte, Brianna Harper, WCNC, Charlotte. The use of force was the key question today in the murder trial of Derek Chauvin. Today, prosecutors drilled down on the use of force policies, asking multiple officers to the stand to ask when it's necessary and training policies. But Chauvin's attorney argued that an angry crowd of bystanders distracted Chauvin and that George Floyd died from drug use and underlying medical conditions, not the nine and a half minutes Chauvin pinned Floyd down with a knee. The crucial testimony from the county medical examiner is expected later this week. If you'd like to watch the whole trial, you can see it on our app on WCNC.com or over the air on channel 36.3. You can also stream it on YouTube via our sister station in Minneapolis, CARE 11. Let's turn to weather now. A warm and dry day turning into a beautiful night over uptown Charlotte. Right now in the Queen City, it's about 68 degrees out there. Temperatures today got up into the 80s. Perfect for an evening at the ballpark. Here's a look at the crowds piling into Truist Field earlier this evening. USC, UNC Gamecocks versus Tar Heels. Nick Carboni will give us a wrap of that game coming up in sports. The real winner, though, today, the people who got out to enjoy the sunshine out there. Brad Panovich joining us now. Brad, we've got more of these days coming too. Yeah, as warm as it was today, Fred, tomorrow's actually going to be even warmer. Today was the warmest day of 2021 so far. Tomorrow, I think we're going to be a couple degrees warmer. High pressure is firmly in control, so not a lot of change here. In fact, tonight, it's really warm. We've got that urban heat island going on here in Charlotte, 68 degrees. That's two degrees below our average high for this time of year, but a lot of other neighborhoods are cooling down into the upper 50s to low 60s. And as we go through the overnight hours, we, cool, we, we will cool down, I should say, into the 50s. But tomorrow, I think we'll be 84, 85 with plenty of sunshine, west, southwest winds. But we are going to see some changes by the end of the week. By Thursday into Friday, get ready for some storm chances moving back into the picture. Plus, tomorrow we've got another air quality alert. I'll tell you what that means coming up in that first one forecast in just a few minutes. Brad, thank you. An update to a story our defenders team has been following for years now. A man who spent 44 years proving his innocence is now fighting for what he calls some sense of justice. 
Ronnie Long finally got compensation from the state for the 44 years he spent behind bars for a crime he did not commit. But Long says the $750,000 he got isn't nearly enough, and his attorney agrees, saying the amount is based on an old law that doesn't make sense in this case. North Carolina intentionally put me in the penitentiary. And you tell me still $150,000? It was 44 years of my life. And we're grateful that the uh, pardon was issued and that he has some means of financial security. Of course, $750,000, a meager sum when you think of 44 years of your life. Long says several civil attorneys have reached out to him and he's weighing his options going forward. Also in South Carolina, lawmakers trying to fill classrooms amid the teacher shortage across the state. Today, House lawmakers passed a bill that would allow non-certified teachers to teach in schools. As we've been reporting, the Palmetto State has had major drop in hiring and retaining teachers, a problem made worse by the pandemic. Lawmakers hope this new bill will help that. Under this measure, while certification isn't required, there are guidelines. They include a bachelor's or graduate degree in the subject a person is hired to teach and at least five years of relevant workplace experience as determined by the local school board. They would also have to pass a criminal records check by the state and federal level. Seeking solutions to the homelessness issue in our area. Charlotte City leaders have announced a major push to help the homeless population. The city is dividing $6 million among several organizations that provide shelter and housing support. That money will help with rent subsidies, employment programs, housing, navigation services, child care, health care, and more. An emergency solutions grant will also be given to the Salvation Army to lease a hotel later this year to help shelter to families in need. So to come at 11, health care providers are telling us people are skipping out on their second vaccine dose appointment. With new numbers showing promising protection from one dose, some are asking, do you really need the second one? Tonight, we talk to the experts to see if both are necessary. We verify coming up next. And more opportunities up in the sky. United Airlines taking a step to try to diversify their pilot staff. How they're working to recruit more women and minorities to take flight. A beautiful night for college baseball and an exciting game in Uptown later in sports. What it will take for full crowds to be at night's games this year. 